Okay, here we go. The last of the new card packs, the Cardassian ATR4107 Dreadnought. And unlike the other ones, which is a new class, a new name for the same class, this is the same ship. So I think this basically replaces the old Dreadnought card. If I'm not mistaken, I'd have to look that up. I don't play Dominion. I don't own a uh, Dominion ship. I don't own a Dreadnought. But I had to buy this pack for the cards that are inside. Because they are fantastic. So again, you want to see here, we have a blank with 12. 180 degree front arc. Very much fun. So let's take a look at the Dreadnought named ship. Dreadnought. Cardassian AR ATR-4107. You cannot equip the captain or admiral of this sh ship. While the ship has no damage cards, treat it as Captain Skill 12. That is an absolutely fantastic named ability. And it's only one point off what it would be otherwise with the 645 stats. So it's still a one point savings. One point's better than nothing with two tech and two weapons because it's not supposed to have any crew on it. There's a card that comes with the Dreadnought pack which is the maintenance crew thing which allows you to add a crew slot to it. But anyway, so six attack, four hull, five shields, lots of durability, lots of hitting power, and starts the captain skill 12. And some of the, I think one or two of the upgrades, shield upgrades are non-federation only, I'm not sure. Gives us some more shields, that would be really nice. But yeah, definitely a hard hitting ship. Uh, so there is a lot of stuff going on here. Let's start with the web, uh, generic ship. Okay, so this one is stuck at, at Captain Skill 1 or 0. Uh, but it is 5 points less because it doesn't have that ability. You know, it would be nice if they had something here where while the ship has no damage cards, she just kept Skill 4 or 5 or something like that. That would have been cool, but it is a 5 point discount over the other ship for just losing one shield. 6, 4, 4. 24 points. That is a pretty hard hitting ship for 24 points. You're just stuck at a low captain skill. And it has typical sucky Dominion maneuvering, but it's got a 180 degree front firing arc, just like most of them, so 24 points. That's a hard hitting bundle right there. So let's see what we got here. So uh, Plasma Pulse. Let's see. Three point weapon, front or rear arc. Doesn't have a rear arc, does it? No. Uh, attack, discard this card. Defending ship cannot spend at battle stations or evade tokens. So if you got something that has lots of evades or um, lots of evade dice with a battle stations token, this is a good way to get around that. Or again, one of those multi-use cards. When defending, discard this card. Attacking ship suffers one crit. Unfortunately, it doesn't say to the hull, but uh, just suffers one crit. So if they're out of shields, Oh wow, this this thing is awesome. Um, now I don't know if that one to two range also applies to that other ability. Probably does. Um, but again, you can either get around their their shenanigans. This gets around Hood Riker. Oh no, that's not true. You can't spend tokens. You can't do that ability. You can't can't spend tokens, but it doesn't stop Riker. Okay. But again, three points, and if they hit you and they have one hull left and they're desperately trying to kill you, oh wait, now we're both dead. Excellent. Excellent. Fun card. And again, these cards are thicker than they have been for quite a while. Ah, oh, Quantum Torpedoes. So, uh, basically the exact same as the old Quantum Torpedoes, two but with only two time tokens. But you do have to spend the target lock. If this attack hits, add one hit, or add two hits if it was fired from the Cardassian. Again, uh, front rear arc, it doesn't have a rear arc, and it's already sitting with six primary attack dice, so um, it's not so good with uh, on the Cardassian Dreadnought, but for other Dominion ships, especially the Jem'Hadar attack ships, uh, this suddenly becomes very viable for only three points. When this was five and six points, no. But you take bugs with this quantum torpedoes, now you've got something. Now you've definitely got, especially since it's two time tokens. Every other turn you can fire these. 
So you fire them once, you spend a turn getting maneuvering and re maneuvering back into position, and then fire again. These oh man, three points for this, so much better than five points. Really makes such a huge difference. That's gonna be a means uh, I would almost play bug spam with this. The bugs are better than just about everything else. Especially since when this isn't you know, they sell three attack dice space. Very much fun. Let's see here. Oh, here's another weapon, Plasma Wave. So two time tokens again, range one, four dice, and all ships. So all opponent ships. So this hits all opposing ships within range one, with four dice, but again, only for the dreadnought. Three points, eh, not too bad. Thoron Shock Emitter, attack, discard, discard, six dice. Again, only for the dreadnought. Ship may reroll any number of attack dice. So basically it's a two points for a free target lock, but since it doesn't have battle stations, I don't see any reason to do this. Since you already have six attack dice, it doesn't fire into a rear arc. So yeah, I don't understand why this card's even in here, but because you can just target lock them. I guess against cloak ships, it would be the only time this card, this thing would really be good. And again, depending on how cloak is done in the new edition, it might mean something. Okay, so now we're going to get into the broken cards. Oh, and I do mean broken. I mean broken. Balana's Codes. Into three-point independent. Again, if you go back to the episode, Balana beams over to the, to the Dreadnought and hijacks it. If one or more time tokens would be placed on a weapon upgrade equipped to this ship, place those time tokens on this card instead. Very nice. When a weapon upgrade, again, bold line, separate ability. When a weapon upgrade equipped to the ship would be discarded, discard this card instead. Fortunately, this thing is unique. Um, first one, first time you can save a weapon. Uh, Transphasics. <laughs> Hello, Transphasics. Hello, Thor Tholion, we Thor Tholion weapon. Ever came with the scimitar? Yeah, there's this card is great. Um, Anything else to say about that, really? Balana Taurus, one point independent crew. When attacking, the ship may reroll one blank. If this Avenging ship is a Dominion ship, this may, the ship may also convert one blank into a hit. One point independent crew for a reroll. No, no, there's no complaints about that. It's a one point crew. Excellent. One point cards are awesome. Oh, this one. This is the one I'm thinking about. Final stage targeting. It's a three-point tech. No restrictions. No restrictions. This ship can only target ships that has a target lock on. So this might be something you want to hide or figure out how to disable. This would be a good one under Quark. So if it is something that... So if you're playing against all cloaked ships you can't get target locks on, you might, not, you might want to just leave it hidden. But when attacking, defending ship must skip the modified defense dice step. This is the ship that blocks Hood Riker. The conversions from Hood Riker, conversions from Sulu's ability. Uh, TOS Sulu, the one where he can convert a battle stations to an evade during his action. Um, so no spinning battle stations tokens. Excellent. Excellent card. Uh, especially if you can keep it hidden. Okay, so now we get into the really bad ones. Shield Adaptation. Uh, the only restriction is a ship with Hull 4+. Plus. Fortunately, it is a unique card. Um, not one per ship, but just one. Discard this card if the ship has no active shields. So it is a... Um, it is, will fall to projected stasis field. When defending, the attacking ship rolls minus two attack dice when firing a primary weapon and minus one attack dice when firing a weapon upgrade. Holy crap, this card is amazing. It's not flawless, it's not perfect. Because as soon as you lose shields, it goes away, and projected stasis field is a good way to do that. And if you have any abilities that say that require you to drop your shields, this would go away. But oh my gosh, just every, and it's when defending. It's not May, it's not, it's every time someone attacks you. They roll two less attack dice. This this card is incredible. Um, it is five points, uh, and it's worth every one. 
Um, this is another uh, card that could be kept beneath Quark to keep it protected from ganking. Because there's a lot of cards that steal tech. Um, or keep it from... Uh, well, I guess they could... from Jennifer Cisco. I guess they could Cisco um, Quark, but that's not a problem. You see, there's ways to, uh, to re-enable crew very easily. Show adaptation, great card. And now for the card that everyone is talking about, um, captured. This upgrade does not require an upgrade slot. This ship gains the independent faction. When defending, if the attacking ship shares a faction with the ship other than independent, the attacking ship rolls one attack dice. So basically, what's happening here is that someone has taken over another ship, and when someone wants to attack their own ship, they get a bonus. But there's so much you can do with this card. When you gain the independent faction, you're not paying faction penalties anymore. You can do a lot more. If you're playing in a penalty pure environment, you can um, uh, you can put you can start mixing factions. No restrictions. So you can put those on every single ship in your fleet if you want to for one point. And so then you start stacking up because there are some just a tremendously awesome independent upgrades. Uh, one that I use all the time is improved deflector screens from the from the uh, Gorn ship. So this could be a major part of this game and not a bad reason to buy multiples of this pack. Captured. So very long. There's a lot more cards in this one than there were in the other ones. Or there's a lot more to talk about one of the one or the other. So that is the unboxing series of the new Star Trek Attack Wing card packs. Again, the key points with these card packs is that you have to have the other ship, the model, and the maneuver dial to play them. So this basically is a $25 investment to play one ship. Um, but it gives you multiple options for that one ship that you have. And there are just so many good cards. They fix so many things, and I just it just gets me excited for um, everything coming up with this game because they are fixing a lot of the problems with it. And I'm really looking forward to the new starter set and the new rules for Attack Wing 2.0, and that's just a month away or so. And, uh, yeah, can't be happier. I absolutely love this game. I can't wait for it to hopefully pick back up again. Thanks for watching.